forever love, right? Vladi V donated $5 through Super Chat. T2 Cartman voice from South Park when someone donates. <laughs> Thanks, bro. You, yeah, you're going to make me cry, like for real. We got... I didn't think it was going to have that effect on me when I was up. You know how long it took me to do that? Do you know how long... Wait, wait. You know how long it took me to be able to get that, to do that? Here, this is getting go. I can get rid of this. Do you know how long that took me? And I wanted to put something funny, but now I want to be careful. Because I don't want to be spitting out my drinks. But thanks, man. I'm going to count all them joints up. Uh, so this is Gabe's words. The case of Canelo versus... <laughs> <laughs> versus the golden boy so this is what we got to do i got to put it into my robot because i'm not going to read all this i read it all yesterday so all right we're going to do the first paragraph all right into the robot i know it's going to be somebody that's going to be bitching i know it is they always somebody gonna comment like it would have been much more better if you could read it yourself somebody's all right here we go Shh. Yo, shut up um, maybe I should put some like a video overlay over it or something. Nah, let's just listen in. Let's just listen in. Canelo Alvarez is unhappy with his promotional outfit and its semi leader figurehead. Canelo Alvarez is unhappy with his promotional Canelo Alvarez is unhappy with his promotional outfit and it's Yo, you're gonna make me laugh. Who subscribed? I gotta make this bigger. You didn't say nothing, bro? Why you ain't say nothing? Thanks, Rashish. Canelo Alvarez is unhappy Shh. with his promotional outfit and its semi-leader figurehead, Oscar de la Hoya. That much you can read any- He was in spirit. He gave messages. He gives guidance. He is forever love, right? Reza Sazish donated a dollar through Super Chat. Change the voice to all Heyman voice my man. We're still working out the kinks. All right, all right. This is a test stream. This is a test stream. We're still working out the kinks. We're still working out the kinks. But now I think I got it. So we're going to have a good show. I got it. We're going to have a good show. All right, I got it now. I got it now. I got it now. All right? I got it. All right. Canelo Alvarez is unhappy with his promotion of outfit and its semi-leader figurehead Oscar De La Hoya. That much you read anywhere. We already knew that they were having beef. All right? But here are some reasons, all of which I shared with Golden Boy seeking his versions of events and none of which was rebuted. Meaning Gabe, the writer of this article, contacted Golden Boy and they didn't say nothing to him. They didn't say like, nah, ain't none of this shit is going on. Canelo told Oscar during negotiations last year not to promise the zone the third fight with Golovkin. Not because Canelo feared the fight, but because he felt he won the second fight in straightforward fashion and he sincerely disliked the idea of helping Golovkin out financially. You know, the blood is bad. 
is bad is bad, is bad blood. Bad blood. You know, yet Oscar promised the zone a third Canelo GGG go around anyway, which has hurt a bunch of people. It led to the zone signing Golovkin by guaranteeing him a shot at Canelo they cannot deliver presently. The zone is in breach of the Golovkin con contract as a result. And Golovkin's lawyers have now sent the zone a letter about the violation demanding a title fight so their guy has a belt to dangle before Canelo in 2020. The Sergei Derevyanchenko fight. The mic is not off. Shut up. We got to get there, guys. All right? We're here. All right? Because I got to edit all this up. And then we got to start doing streams five days a week. You know? Got a show coming out. I need your help. So let's make it through this. You know? The Zone C-Suite definitely wants for the box. Okay, so here's where he starts throwing all these references out there. That we're not even going to get into. But the point of the article and basically is that here's the thing. Let's start here. Canelo is also upset Oscar receives his own perks as a part of Canelo's $350 million of the zone contract. Part of the paycheck Canelo generates is used to compensate other fighters on Golden Boy card. Canelo can't see why that money shouldn't go to development of his own business. Like a promotional company for like, yeah, where is Canelo promotions? You know? After all, nobody has made money for Golden Boy, but nobody has made money for Golden Boy, been a boxer in the black instead of red, besides Canelo for years. Canelo has secured the services of an independent lawyer either to renegotiate his Golden Boy deal or to ensure it's properly enforced to cut a deal in which Canelo buys out the remainder of his contract. So it seems as though he wants out. Right? Seems as though he went out. The lawyer might wind up doing all three in that order. Someone ballparked a buyout figure. We don't know where he's getting this stuff from, but he wouldn't write this if he didn't have any sources. The lawyer might wind up doing all three in that order. Someone ballparked a buyout figure to me of 20 to 30 million. But only if Canelo lawyer can show Golden Boy has been acting in bad faith or not living up to its side of the deal. And the figures obviously could vary greatly based on fight outcomes. Canelo wants out. He wants out. And at this point in time in his career, you know how it gets for, you know, in this generation, a fighter gets big enough, you don't really need a promoter anymore, really. You know, really, after a while, when you start generating that type of money, I mean, I mean, basically, you know, depending on how you look at the Al Heyman situation, because he, instead of paying a promoter and a manager, he just do both. He made his own position, a manager advisor. Sadly, this is where Oscar's history of substance abuse has legal implication. I really respect the way Oscar has treated me personally and addiction is a disease. But Canelo was reportedly embarrassed by a few instances in which Oscar was a no show at his presters. Because Oscar was impaired or hung over. If it can be proven he was indeed absent for that reason, Canelo will get paid. Canelo will, will get to pay far less to buy out his deal because it portends greater difficulty for Oscar should be the case litigated. Basically, what that means is like if Canelo can prove, like, yo, listen, um, like it's not a situation of like um, not just financial. Canelo, you know, Oscar do be missing. You know, why is this so bright? God damn it. Oscar do be missing from a lot of stuff. And you be thinking like, wait a minute. Like, you know, I don't even remember if he was at at the um, at Canelo he Jacobs final. He gave messages. He gives. I got to make that bigger. He is forever love, right? Jason Elliott donated five dollars through Super Chat. After hearing you read that, I need you to K that reading rainbow intro, bra. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I got to be careful with what I add to that text because what's going to happen is I'm going to be cracking up and it's going to distract me from my work. Yeah. So, no, I don't know. You know what I want to put? Like, I want to get a more detailed Brazil getting knocked out. See, I'm off track already. See, I want one when he's like 
you know, like laying down there and the camera circling over him and shit. But anyway, um, I mean, you should be embarrassed if you're Canelo. Like Oscar, you know, Canelo wants out. And how much is it going to cost him to get out? And it looks like, from what we're reading, I don't know. You know, we're not lawyers. You know, we don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. Like, in regards to, are they talking? And then it didn't look good for Canelo to throw Roberto Diaz, the uh, matchmaker of Golden Boy, under the bus on Twitter. Basically, you know, from what I'm reading from the article, is here, here. Meanwhile, how genuine was Canelo in recent days in accusing Golden Boy matchmaker Robert, Robert Diaz of leaving him in the dark about negotiations involving his IBF mandatory challenger, Sergei Derevyanchenko. The jury is out, but the last couple of months in Robert Diaz's life have been odd. The Golden Boy matchmakers had to take out, take on more executive tasks, including the act of shooing Sergey with step aside money so Canelo could face brand name opponent Sergey Kovalev, who didn't receive a satisfactory offer from Golden Boy until a day after the deadline for him to withdraw withdraw from his August 24th bout. It has been a lot of shit going on. Hold on. According to one source, Golden Boy ignored all calls and emails from the IBF and from Sergey's representatives for more than two whole months and only got back in touch just before an IBF mandated just before an IBF mandated deadline in order to ask for the deadline to be pushed off, which it was. Had Diaz picked up the phone, perhaps the step aside fees would have been accepted and the IBF belt retained. So basically, you know, if this is true, yeah, it's like, you know, somebody not doing their paperwork. It's like, how the fuck, like, how do you let something like that, um, um, happen? You know, I understand what the fuck. <coughs> Strawberry smoothie is the seeds, the little seeds. <clears throat> Those damn strawberry seeds. <clears throat> you always get stuck in my throat. So, <clears throat> this fucking shit right here too, man, for the tubes. Pause. Pause. One minute. One minute. Let me go hack my brains out. Let me go cough real quick. I'll be right back. Be right back. One minute. Nah, from when I had that, um, that I'm still having those lingering effects from that damn coma, man. That shit still be haunting me. It's crazy. Sometimes I'd be like, yo, I was in a coma for three weeks. Like, what the fuck? That was some weird ass shit, man. No, what happened was, um, it's called no, no, no homo, you know, pause, but my throat is not the same anymore because it's like a, um, I had a trait, you know, when they had to like put the breathing tube down my throat and all that. So it's not the same. Where shit always be getting stuck in there. Ah, that just sounds pause. Ah. Hell no, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Alright, we back. We back. <clears throat> we back. <clears throat> Alright, we back. Hold up. Where we at? Where we at? I got all these screens and everything now, man. It's uh you know. Takes a little bit uh get used to. But all right, yeah, I know what I got to do. We got to change that super chat voice, right? We got to change that super chat voice. Make it something funnier. Uh, and we got to get more creative with the images. Right? <clears throat> no, I don't know what it is. Well, for one, um, this is a pain in the ass. Okay, so what I've got from this is like, you know, that title situation, it seems as though the IBF would have been lenient. But if this is true, 
Robert Diaz didn't do the paperwork right. Or he just was like, well, it's Canelo. We're going to keep pushing them off. They're going to do whatever Canelo say. So, yeah, you got to be, you know, like pissed if you're Canelo because, you know, for one, he had to take like all that shit from being like labeled the franchise champion. Then now, you know, he had to lose his IBF title. And then the zone is just in a whole bunch of shit, but that's not their fault. How is it the zone fault that Oscar, right, Golden Boy, promised the zone, okay, yeah, sign can no worry, and will, you know, like the Canelo fight happen? I mean, the um, third Golovkin fight happen. And then the zone goes to Golovkin and say, hey, yeah, Golden Boy already told us it's going to happen, so come on over, we're going to sign you to all this money. You know? For example, you have um, Oscar De La Hoya here. I can pull one of these interviews up. De La... Where's it at? Hoya T... Wait, De La Hoya. You know? We've seen all these interviews of Oscar talking all this shit about like you know like I, like once they signed that contract right once they signed that contract they didn't have no say anymore it's not a, a, a time of the pay-per-view era like it's not that time anymore like look remember like when i remember when i first started seeing these interviews from what i know about sports and business or whatever you want to say i thought to myself like well wait a minute they like there's no pay-per-view in this it, like they don't have any leverage they don't have any leverage, you know, when you're getting guaranteed money. That's one real quick. Triple G wants to do a, uh, he wants to do the trilogy fight. Yeah. Canelo. Yeah. He wants to get through Steve Royals first, and then he thinks he's gonna win. Yeah. What do you feel about that? Uh, we'll make him wait. We'll see. We'll make him wait. I will make him wait. He's he's the he's the B fighter now. So Canelo, Canelo's the A fighter. So we have. We have a, I have a meeting with him in, in Mexico uh, next week, uh -huh. so we'll see. If it happens, do you think he'll give him? A, you think he'll get the win, or you think? I think Canelo will knock him out. You think he'll knock him out? That wasn't the first. Like, remember, he was doing all these interviews. Like, well, you know, like um, we don't have to. He gonna have to wait for us. And I'm thinking, the Zone is a startup app, right? It's a startup service. What's the biggest, like, you know, the biggest fight that they had the opportunity to make or have the opportunity to make is Canelo. You know, I'm talking about, um, Can obviously, Joshua versus Ruiz now, too, but Canelo versus Golovkin 3 to bring in subscribers. So you got to think, like, we got to isolate it. You can't blame them, right? Who do you blame in this situation? It's really only one person you can blame, and it's him, Oscar De La Hoya. You know, on that side, because... You're supposed to sit down like I, I if it's tr like, how do you how like, OK, when it came to the contract from the zone for all that money. Right. Does it say in that contract that Canelo, when you see him, it's a photo that go, it's a photo on um, online. You know, I can pull it up, but I really don't feel like it where you see Oscar De La Hoya, Eric Gomez, um, Canelo. And they're signing a contract. In that contract, is Golovkin's name in there? Or when 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 Oscar De La Hoya met with John Skipper, the chairman of the zone, and and Twilight, fucking uh, the Twilight, Jim Murkowski, Twilight, was Canelo in that meeting? And then Golovkin's name had to come up, right? Like something like how like how did Canelo get this money and not know like that they was gonna like he was gonna have to fight Golovkin? It doesn't make any sense, you know. So it's weird. But in regards to Canelo losing his IBF title, I support the IBF. You know, I, I, the one thing I love about the IBF is they make sure that you get, if you're a mandatory, you get your title shot. Unless there's some valid exemption or you are a um, a uh, unified champion, um, like Andy Ruiz's situation. They acknowledge that the WBO got to get their shot first. They acknowledge, like, listen, 
in 2020, you know, after Joshua Reese 2, it is it is WBO next, Alexander Usyk, and then the IBF title at heavyweight is going to have to be defended in the summer of 2020 or no later than the fall. You know, it's certain exemptions and, and, and certain ways they work with you. But in Canelo's case, you know, they see all this bullshitting around. And then if it's true, according to this article, that the matchmaker who's supposed to be watching the rankings, watching the shakers and movers, you know, looking at the different fighters, looking at what fights you can make, what fights can be made. But not only that, keeping track of the fighters' titles and, and the rules and the deadlines. You know, like for Canelo to be made the franchise champion was 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 stress off the back of a guy like Roberto uh, Robert Diaz. Because then he don't got to worry about, oh, shit, Charlo, too, like shit, you know. So all of it is just weird. And and it is true. Oscar's been having like a lot of issues over the years, you know, party or too much. Luckily, you know. We don't we don't see that, you know, or feel I don't feel that it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Or maybe he got, you know, maybe he got, um, um, you know, more secretive with it. But it isn't it's not a good look like over the last couple of years, especially it's not a, like put it this way. It's like when you get a new job. Right. And then you start calling out, you know, for like bullshit during the fucking first 90 days you know they like what the fuck you know so it's like you get that new deal oscar you're not showing up to events you're not showing the pressures and shit you're supposed to be everywhere you just got all that money and then the zone just gave you your, your company more money to put on other fights and don't get me wrong i've been liking those i'm um, like um i'm gonna be at the cole frampton fight well he's not fighting this week we're gonna talk about that later on in the video um we gotta get on track i gotta get a timer to show how long we've been live because i gotta edit all that stuff out so once again for people who don't understand let me just put this disclaimer out here when you do a live stream you just don't start talking you see what i'm saying so half an hour is overkill i want 15 to 20 minutes of like you know like making sure everybody know get here and then after that 20 minute mark i'm starting but afterwards i edit all that stuff out you know, because if I just say, OK, click live and then just start talking, I'm going to be repeating myself later on, you know, in the video. So I like to wait for, you know, and then move from there. But we are going to be streaming on Mondays from 12 to 2 every Monday and select, well, all major fights. We're going to be here live once again on the late night, the late night show at the most at the most I will do. 2.5 hours. I don't want to do no more than two hours. So let's say, for example, you know how when a fight ends, you got to wait for the post-fight press conference, which usually starts somewhere between an hour to sometimes two hours after the fight. You see what I'm saying? So we're going back to that. And, and you know, thank you to the powers that be. We're in a situation right now where I'm the only YouTube channel that can bring you post-fight highlights. So we have the, you know, um, the go-ahead and now the technology to give you four post-fight shows where we can break down the knockouts, controversial stoppages, all that shit in fucking slow motion. Fight View 360, Two Street Controversy, Two Street Controversy Live. Also, did this Teespring store open up down below? Do you see the store down below in the description box yet? Yeah, we got two stores now. So yeah, I have been working and now I got a whole bunch of time on my hands until November. So we're gonna be streaming a lot. So when it comes to um, major press conferences, we're streaming them all. You know, weigh-ins, we're streaming them all. You know? So, all right. And also, so remember, this is a new... It took me about five straight days. I don't remember to build all of this from scratch. This is not the same program I was using before. It's much more cleaner. It flows more smoother. You know, a lot more features. Like, for example, once again, I got to make sure that... gave messages. See? He gives guidance. Is See, it's too small. Life, right? Dan Shigwada donated two pounds through Super Chat. Keep up the good work, T. That's what's up. See, I, I gotta, um, that's what I was about to say. I gotta fix that up, make that, you know, like, it's too small. All right? And then fix the voice. I don't know what voice I'm gonna give it. But yeah, we've been working on all this, man. Oh! You know, also, I got like a bunch of bots where like y'all be able to like, use like points for the channel. 
and like to gamble. Not real money, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, where did we leave off? What were we doing? Oh, that makes you wonder, right? I mean, Canelo's got to fight. He can't just like not fight. Is it Andre? Andre's been kind of quiet. You know, that's the rumor. They in negotiation. He's been playing fucking duck, duck, goose. You know, I understand, you know, that he doesn't want to fight Golovkin right away. You know, but it seems as though he just doesn't want to fight Golovkin again at all. And that's a bad look. You know, he wants to be done with it. And right now, he doesn't have... Like that type of Mayweather power where people are going to be. But then again, he didn't he didn't dominate. He can't just say, in my opinion, he can't just say, you know, I'm not going to fight him again. Especially if he gets another belt. You know, Golovkin's not getting any younger. He's got to come back soon. I expect for I expect for October, November and December to be busy. I wouldn't be surprised if we get fights the week of New Year. I wouldn't be surprised. Because remember, August is kind of, you know, and then remember, the, we, we, these, these channels, streaming services, they got contracts, they got dates to fill. Well, Golovkin doesn't bring any, see, you can't say that. You can't, he doesn't, like, you can't say that. You can't say that. Seeing that he doesn't bring anything, to, you can't say that. I'm sorry. You know? Fans still want to see that fight. The fight still has buzz, especially if you're going to be getting it for $10 or $20, whatever the zone is charging right now. You know, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't agree with that. 